Andrew, you've got some news, Andrew. Trump on 54% share of the vote to Clinton's 42% share of the vote. He has, in other words, on this projection, taken one of those key battleground states, landing him 18 electoral college votes. As I said at the beginning of the night, this is somewhere he has campaigned tirelessly. I've seen him myself on the stump, and those rallies have been energised. So here you have it. Ohio has been projected for Donald Trump. And actually, Nathan, we're going to toss it back to Judy and Hari because we've got some news. All right, sorry to interrupt, but we do have a call to make in the all-important state of Ohio, and that is Donald Trump is projected the winner. As you can see right now, not all the votes are in, but uh, it has been expected that Trump would win. But this is, uh, I have to, you have to say, David Brooks, uh, the Democrats were hoping they could pull it out. Hillary Clinton spent a lot of time there especially earlier on in this race. Uh, they may not have, they may not need it to win, but it sure would have been nice for the Democrats. Yeah, and obviously it was the swingiest of the swing states for a couple terms. It wasn't quite that swingy this time because it's a, a more white state and industrial state. Republican arguments on trade and immigration and the deindustrialization arguments were just, um, were just dominant because that's where he's doing really well, a lot of those places. No Republican has ever been elected without carrying Ohio. Only two Democrats have won the White House without carrying Ohio. So I, I think it is, it, it's significant, um, and it, it just makes it that much harder. I think it becomes a steeper climb for Clinton. We're quickly back from the break. We have a new projection. The state of Ohio, NBC News projects when the votes are counted, Ohio will go to Donald Trump. Donald Trump will win Ohio. Look, first of all, Ohio, a little historical nugget. Ohio is a no Republican. You, you, you have to win Ohio to win the White House. Trump has done it. Florida's trending his way. North Carolina's trending his way. I was just going to say Ohio is one where the polls seem to have gotten it right because the polls have consistently shown a tight race, but Trump up a little bit. But as you mentioned, I mean, if he's going to no put Florida in his, in his column yeah. and Ohio, potentially North Carolina, now we're looking at the Rust Belt, Virginia, little... Close for yeah. comfort for, for Clinton. Look, they, the Clinton campaign bragged about these firewalls and these pat Okay, well, uh, yeah. let's see if you have one. Yeah. I think we underestimated the turnout in rural areas, and yeah. I think a lot of the polling underestimated it. And it, and it turns out these folks, they maxed out in rural America beyond maxing out. It vindicates what Donald Trump has been That's saying right. about his rallies. Yeah, Look at all these people. I got 20,000 people in this little tiny section yeah. of North Carolina or Michigan or wherever. Look at Ohio. The governor of Ohio, a very popular guy, Governor Casey, uh, who has gone to war against Donald Trump during this entire election season. Trump comes into the state and wins it. I mean, that tells you something that is extraordinary that is going on. Conventional politics ain't in play anymore, folks. And uh, CBS News is making a new projection for the state of Ohio. And we'll have that up for you here in just a moment. And there is the state of Ohio. CBS News is projecting that once all the votes are counted, Donald Trump will win Ohio. Now, this keeps his hopes alive. Ohio was a very important state for him to win. He needs to win Ohio. He needs to win Florida. Right now, Florida is too close to make an estimate. John, uh, what does Ohio mean? Well, Ohio was one of those states, they're falling into the traditional patterns. Well, Ohio is a state that Donald Trump was going to, had a chance to do well in because there was a big portion of the electorate that was non-college educated voters. There's a low portion of the electorate that was minority. It's also a state where Hillary Clinton pulled out all the stops in terms of star power that she brought to Ohio. And it, it shows you that celebrity endorsement don't necessarily mean victory. Election day, very that, clearly. That's for sure, unless you're a celebrity yourself, in Donald Trump's case, and yeah. that seems to have yeah. helped him it's certainly in the state him. of Ohio. Yeah. Donald Trump projected to win the state of Ohio, and it's 18 electoral votes there, and David, we're going to see a big gender gap in that state. Well, let's dive into these demographic stores, because this is really fascinating in Ohio, which, of course, was a must-win for Donald Trump, and he's now pulled that off tonight. No Republican wins the White House without Ohio. And one more thing I wanted to show you is when you do the education breakdown, uh, the voters without college degrees, 55% to 45 uh, with a college degree, which gets back to this discussion we've been having about economic opportunity in this country, not matching those with college degrees and trying to level the playing field. And, and Koki, that is something we've seen there. We've seen the gender gap probably a little bit less there than you would have expected and, that Hillary Clinton wanted in the state of Ohio. In Ohio, yes. Uh, and these are people who stuck with this guy through 
the most incredible campaign in our history, I think it's safe to say. Whatever happens tonight, Donald Trump has astonished uh, the country. We are back. Uh, we have a major call coming out of the vote. We'll try to get it up there, and it is Ohio. Donald Trump, the projected winner in the state of Ohio. 18 electoral votes, a hugely important piece of real estate where that comparison is concerned. Obviously, Ohio is the archetypal uh, battleground, but I think everybody's been feeling like it was leaning toward him. Still, that's got to shake the Clinton confidence even more than these other close races do right now. Winning Ohio does put him at the edge now, possibly winning the election. However, I do think we're going to see a pattern which is traditional. Uh, the Republican, if you look at the country, it's basically divided 50-50. Uh, winning Ohio, then losing Pennsylvania makes sense tonight. But we'll see if it does end up making sense. One Peace. thing I will say about this Ohio call is that this is something that the Clinton campaign was prepared for. So when they were setting out their map that said, okay, we have all these more paths than the Trump campaign, it included losing Ohio and losing Iowa. So I think from that perspective, uh, this, you know, th this news should be tempered just a little bit. All right. Let's go to Simone Del Rosario. More numbers on the board tonight, and it's more than interesting. Look, it's been looking very promising for him, but now we can officially call Ohio for Donald Trump. That is 18 electoral votes going to Donald Trump with more than 67% of precincts in that state reporting. This was a must win for Donald Trump, and he has a long way to go in a couple of these swing states here if he wants to take the election. I, I think he's ripping the scab off America tonight with a great deal of emotion. All of the tweets, all of the taking a stick and putting it in somebody's eye, all the disparaging comments. You almost start to get the feeling now that there were people sitting at home watching this stuff saying, yeah, I'd say the same thing too. I mean, he has an unvarnished opinion of the, what he wants to do with the country. And so far, uh, for Democrats, they're shaking in their boots tonight. They're pretty scary about where it is right now. As it turns out, really, that if your calculation is, can you win a general election in the United States of America with bitter racial divisiveness, the answer right now is maybe. Every day he's calling her crooked Hillary. Every day there's some more revelations about the way they were running their campaign. But let's be fair, the Republicans didn't give Donald Trump much help. We have a major projection right now. Donald Trump will take Ohio. CNN projects Donald Trump will win Ohio with its 18 electoral votes. A relief for Donald Trump. No Republican has ever won the White House without Ohio. He has won Ohio with its 18 electoral votes. Big win for Donald Trump in the state of Ohio. So Jake and Dana, Jake, this is a big win. He needed Ohio. He got Ohio. But I didn't know, based on polling and based on how Democrats talked about Ohio and how Hillary Clinton campaigned there. It was just a few nights ago she was there with Beyonce and Jay-Z campaigning. I didn't know it was going to be so early that we're going to be able to call Ohio. It is remarkable what we're seeing here, not just Ohio, but all over the country. Dan, a lot of stunned Democrats out there right now. Donald Trump, we are projecting to win Ohio. No thanks to the sitting Republican governor in Ohio, John Kasich. John Kasich made it very, very clear, very loudly, that he did not think Trump was the right person for the party, the right person to leave the country, sat out of the convention, even though it was in, in, in his home state. Ohio has now been called. That's the uh, change in the numbers you see on your, uh, on your screen. 164 now for Trump, 109 for Clinton. He's heading in the right direction. Donald Trump was obviously the higher risk choice an authoritarian figure, um, very close to um, Russia and with ominous consequences for the NATO alliance. It just seemed too dangerous. And you imagined, I think a lot of people um, who have ideas about how voters behave imagine the voters would flinch from the high-risk alternative. They may yet do that, but for now, a lot of people have embraced the high-risk alternative as they did in Brexit. And Brexit isn't going too well. All right, Danielle.
Uh, back to you. The reality is, is that if you have looking at the Dow futures and they're down 550 points back in 2008, when we were in the midst of our great recession, we saw those same numbers. So the idea that we have Wall Street right now in a panic, we have gold going up because that's where this that's where the security is and has been for the longest time. Like we knew the possibility of what a Trump presidency could look like. The problem with the low, undereducated, um, white, Rust Belt folks that were coming out and going hard for Trump is that their jobs were never going to come back. But they fell for they fell for the rope a dope, which is exactly what happened. I wrote this months ago in talking about the comparisons between Trump and other authoritarian other authoritarian figures in our politics and our history, like Hitler, and how they came in and they were able to grab onto something and we thought it couldn't happen. And for people who thought that it wouldn't happen and they said it couldn't possibly happen. Hillary Clinton, uh, Michelle Obama, I think I'm correct, and Joe Biden, I think all five of them went to Michigan in the last like yes. four days. Like they all went, they knew, they knew. Okay, uh, I'm calling Ohio. Um, so. Nobody else has called it yet. I'm calling it. It's a 10-point lead with 51% reporting, 53-43 for Trump. Trump's going to win Ohio. So Ohio is now gone, gone. Okay? Uh, so that's, okay, don't panic over that. He was supposed to win Ohio. He wasn't supposed to win it by 10. So for that you should panic. He probably won't win it by 10. Probably, yeah, but, but the fact that he's got a 10-point lead with 51% reporting. Okay, here, that's another thing. If you told me, hey, Jank, it's 9.51 Eastern, Trump is winning by 10 points in Ohio with 51% reporting, I would have said, ah, okay, because not because you're going to lose Ohio, you expect to lose Ohio, but not good numbers if you want to hang on to Pennsylvania, Michigan, and, and, the, and the states around there. Okay, we've got to take a quick two-minute break here, uh, but 95% in in Florida, he's got a one-and-a-half-point lead, 90% in in Virginia, and it's about tied. North Carolina, he's got a 2.4% lead. And as we go to the break here, uh, New York Times has uh, the chance of Donald Trump winning the presidency at 59%. 59%. What is, what, what happens? Okay, we'll be, we'll be, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more information.